Hi, my name's Andy, and until April, I had a thriving bus company, and then, uh... Rule number one, accept reality. Not everything that is faced can be changed, but nothing can be changed until it is faced. James Baldwin. In April, we were running a thriving business. We had dozens of employees, tons of buses, and tons of happy customers coming and going all the time. It was wonderful. And then like that, there was nothing. It was completely dead. And for a small business, this is horrible. Not only are you not selling new reservations, you're refunding old ones that have been sold a year or two ago. Negative cash flow can be the kiss of death for any business, but especially a small one. So I sat there and I tried to figure it out. And I went through a lot of mistakes and I finally got to a pivot that worked for us. And I wanna share what I learned so you can get there yourself if that's what you wanna do. Let's go. walk that way, but I haven't taken that path yet. Let's go try that one. Rule number two, pick up the pieces. The musher's motto has always been, drive the dogs you have, not the dogs someone else has. John Balzar. So if you follow rule number one, you've accepted the reality, but now what are you gonna do? A lot of people start with ideas. Ideas are good, ideas get you excited, but you can't just have ideas. You need a, a path. You need somewhere you want to go to get out of your present now, which might not be that good. And I, I felt that this was the end of the bus company. But I had a lot of free time on my hands then, so I was sitting in a blank piece of paper, literally, and I felt that I just had a totally clean slate, in a bad way, to start over again. Uh, that is not an exciting prospect. When you're in a business for 10 years, nobody wants to start over again. But it wasn't true. I had a big bus garage. I had a lot of customers that knew that we put heart into everything that we did. And we had a bunch of employees who were laid off and at home, but still wanted to do stuff. They wanted to get up and get things done. And so I looked into different things we could do. Uh, first, I looked into a mask machine. You know, mask machines are, turns out, about $5 million. I called lots of places seeing about getting a machine cheaper or trying to see if I get someone to invest or do something like that and I had I had no such luck that was not happening I also looked into a toilet paper machine because of course toilet paper was in super short supply and it turns out you need a sawmill ah I merged you need a sawmill for that and a paper mill and a lot more equipment that just wasn't gonna happen so, so it was then that I saw in the news that Hand sanitizer in short supply. Hand sanitizer, of all things. Hand sanitizer was not a popular product before COVID hit, but all of a sudden everybody wanted it. It wasn't in stores anywhere. And a lot of doctors felt that hand sanitizer could keep you safe. And it just seemed really bogus that Detroiters couldn't get any of it. I'll use this log here as a tripod. So I looked into what it took to make hand sanitizer, and it turned out it was actually a lot easier than you might think. It's just alcohol, a couple other ingredients. The trouble though is that nobody could get the alcohol. Everybody was hoarding it. Everybody was trying to keep it all to themselves. Industrial users were buying huge quantities of it, train cars thinking it might run out in the future. So we couldn't get alcohol anywhere. But I called and I called and I called and I called probably 30 or 40 places before I found one on the west side that had a couple drums of alcohol. So right there on the spot, I charged all this alcohol, drums of it, four drums of it, I think, about 200 gallons, to my personal credit card. And it was triple the normal price. I mean, it was absolutely exorbitant, but I had to try this thing out. I had to give it a shot. And so we got the alcohol back to the warehouse, made our first batch, it sold immediately. And so then I found a little bit more. The guy who I bought it from originally got a couple more in, but that was it. He said he's getting no more. And so we made another batch, but then we were stuck. We were out of supplies. And so, I called around nationally and everybody was completely out of alcohol. There was no way we were gonna be able to get this. But we found one supplier, but they could only deliver by the semi-truck. <laughs> I'll pick up on the alcohol story in a minute. But coming to Belle Isle here, ah, ow, is a metaphor. 
you gotta find a new path. Look, there's not a lot of path here. There's a little bit, but there's not a lot. You gotta find a new path to somewhere you want to go and not just have an idea. I had a thousand ideas before we settled on hand sanitizer. A whole bunch that were just totally terrible, like a rolling bodega out of our buses, and it just was never gonna work. You gotta find your way through. And you gotta accept that it's gonna be a little uncomfortable as you're going along. But you've got a lot of stuff. You've got relationships, you've got friends, you've got networks. You can figure it out. Then eventually you'll get somewhere beautiful. Like this. But until then, branches in the face. Here at the bus depot to show you something. Here's all the buses that have been parked since April, which is kind of heartbreaking, but they'll be here for when things get going again. Rule number three, commit fully. If you don't risk anything, you risk even more. Erica Jung. This is a 7,000 gallon tanker truck. So we had chosen a new path, which was making hand sanitizer. And it was working pretty well, but we had to get way more alcohol, way, way more alcohol. And buying it by the drum was not working. So the only way to make it work was to buy our own tanker truck. I ran the numbers a million different ways, and there was no way we were gonna be able to scale this business without buying our own truck. But it feels crazy buying your own tanker truck. I mean, it's just an insane thing to do, to get something this big. But I ran the numbers over and over again, and it just came out that we had to buy our own semi-truck. So I found one that used to haul Fireball whiskey. I made an offer on it. I paid cash for it. It took almost all of the money that we had. It was not an easy decision. This was committing fully to the path of making hand sanitizer, buying this truck. There was nothing else we'd really needed such a giant semi-truck for. But by buying the truck, we were able to get alcohol far cheaper. We were able to cut our prices in half. We were actually able to start making so much sanitizer that we were able to donate a bottle for every bottle that we sold. This truck made that all possible. But buying a truck was the only way we'd get to the next level in making sanitizer. Wanna see inside? Oh yeah, see it in there? Whew, it smells strong. That is about 3,000 gallons of pure food grade alcohol. That is not something a few months ago that I would have had, but here we are. Rule number four, experience failure. Nearly only counts in horseshoes and hand grenades. Neil Gaiman. Now I've messed up riding this BMX bike more times than I can count. And I messed up tons of times in the sanitizer thing so far. One time I ordered $3,000 worth of labels oriented the wrong way so they wouldn't even work in our machine. That's a bummer. goal is still to succeed. I want to go and ride this bike really well and do cool tricks and have fun, but sometimes that's not in the cards. But I learn from it. Get a little smarter every time. I try not to make the same mistakes. But whenever you're taking on a new challenging thing, some failure is kind of the expected outcome. And how do you think any of the BMX stars never fell off their bikes? That'd be impossible. They've broken bones, they scrape knees. It's just part of the process. It's just part of how it goes.
Rule number five, remember you are not alone. Fight for the things that you care about, but do it in a way that will lead others to join you. Madam Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg. This canoe right here is made for an entire Boy Scout troop. It is not very easily operated as one person. Mostly because the end is up in the air and it's really hard to steer, which means you can get hung up on logs and walls and all kinds of stuff that wants to flip you into the water. This would be far easier with another person. Getting through COVID and getting through this whole pandemic thing, ironically, is much easier with other people. Just because you can't be there in person doesn't mean you can't reach out for help. Other small business owners really know what you're going through right now because they deal with the same issues. Yeah. See, told you. The wind wants to take me right into the wall. As a bus company, there would have been no way that I could have gotten the word out if we didn't have thousands of people online who supported us, who shopped with us before. Oh, got a tricky part coming up. But we had a business right away because we built on that history and people wanted to support us. They wanted to keep our small bus company going and I really appreciate them for that. So, but if you gotta go it alone, as I'm doing here, you just keep paddling. Look ahead, you'll make it. So thanks for listening today. I appreciate it. I hope you make it an awesome day. See ya. Mm-hmm. <laughs>